Hey lovelies, thanks for stopping by my channel today. I am excited for today's video. We are totally rocking in blue land today. Uh, you've already seen from the title of this video, we're gonna be working with the Nomad Whistler Snow Lodge palette and my brand new Larafe brushes. So you can see it's all about the blue today. I just thought that I should, well, I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I said that I was going to use these brushes in my recent BYOP and I totally forgot, but then I realized I had this palette coming and I mean, if this isn't a pair made in heaven, I don't know what is. So this is definitely more of a first impressions video because I just got this baby in the mail, but we are going to be doing two looks. So if you can't tell, I am super excited about both of these purchases and I can't wait to give you my thoughts. But before we dive into all of that, I just wanna give you a few details. Now, the Nomad Whistler Snow Lodge palette is $39 and you do get 15 beautiful shades in here. I was very excited for this one because, honestly, because of the blues. I don't have a lot of blues in my collection. It's not something I reach for a lot, but it's something that I feel that was missing in my in my collection. So as you can see, we dove right into those today. And Nomad is also a cruelty-free and vegan company, and I have one palette from them. I have purchased the America's Parks palette. I love that palette. I love the ethos of the brand. I love the beautiful packaging. I love all the detail that they have. I mean, the embossing, the names, everything is just so fun, so beautiful. So I definitely knew I had to snag this one. All right, so let's take a minute to chat about these pretty babies. So this beautiful blue set is the Royal Blue Luxe Eye Brush Set from Lara Fay. And if you aren't familiar with Lara Fay, they are a UK-based brand that I heard about through my wonderful friend, Alana, over at All Together Alana. She raves about these brushes. I know that she has like the big full set. So I saw that they were doing a sale. I believe it was around Black Friday. I could be wrong, but it was kind of around there. Now, while I did get these at either 30 or 40% off, I still think at full price, they're a great deal. So these are 30 pounds with for US dollars with the conversion rate that ends up being about $41. I did also get a set of the like makeup cleaners, makeup eraser pads, makeup remover pads. Makeup remover pads is probably what they're called and I'm excited to try these as well. But today we are focusing on the brushes. And again, I did get this brush as well, which they threw in complimentary. So thank you to the brand for that. And by the way, this set is nine brushes, including the lip brush. Now I did go ahead and stash two brushes off to the side to put into a giveaway. They're just sizes and shapes that I don't necessarily need more of in my collection. I mean, let's face it, I probably don't need any more brushes, but Alana loves these and I couldn't wait to try them out. So that is gonna be what we're working with today. I will of course be giving you swatches of this palette, but I know that my video is not exactly like early to the game here. So I'm gonna be throwing those in at the end of this video if you do want to see that. And all of that, by the way, will be timestamped down below. I of course will have all the details on these products for you. And just in case we haven't met before, my name is Kelly and I'm a professional hair and makeup artist. And here on my channel, I strive to keep beauty real, real honest, real relatable and real fun. So if that sounds like something you'd enjoy, don't forget to click subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Figured I should throw that intro in here even though we're probably like two or three minutes into the video. Let's get started. We'll show you these looks. There's no use in looking back. Gotta laugh for gotta live. Cause I'm so over the past. And I'm living it fast. Mm -hmm. Underneath the Close your eyes and set it free. Mm -hmm. 
All right, here is my first look using this palette. I am really happy with this. Uh, I will say, and I had kind of heard this around the beauty sphere, that the shade, uh, what is it, Snowman, love that name. So this shade does take a bit of building. It definitely doesn't go on as like, <clears throat> as you think it's going to when it's in the pan. I also will say, I don't think that the brush that I use, like I was just like, all right, let's grab a brush. So I did grab the Lerafe E14 and this is a big mama, right? So it's going to start out more diffused, which means that it's going to be a little bit lighter wash of color. So that is one thing that I will say, but once I started packing it on, I went in with the E12 and really packed it on then then I got the color that I was hoping for out of it. So I will say if you're wanting some <clears throat> from the shade, you're probably gonna wanna use a sticky base, something that has like a little bit of tack to it. Now can we just talk about these shimmers? Okay, um, yeah, black comb, hello. <sighs> I love this. So this is like a beautiful sapphire blue with just that like little whisper of that like purple duochrome shift. I love this and of course, I mean, we all knew I was gonna like the Whistler shade, right? It's like that beautiful kind of like minty sea foamy green. Mm, mm, mm. And I really like the way that it tied in with this. Okay, so Snow Bunny is not a shade that I would necessarily use on its own very much. But for me, it is essential in this palette because this uh, Snow Mad shade, because my skin is a little bit warmer, anytime I start to blend out a blue, it starts looking a little bit green. So if you don't want that majorly green hue, like if you don't want it to start looking you know, more like blue greeny, I need that like white that's in this base to be able to like get a little bit more of that like true blue pop from this. So it's an essential for me in this palette if I'm wanting to do a look that isn't using, you know, another shade to like blend that blue out. So I'm glad that that one is in here. Uh, I did go through with Apres Ski on my lower lash line just to kind of tie in like that beautiful like minty shade. So I'm actually really pleased with the matte inner corner versus a shimmer, but that means that we definitely have to do something shimmery for our next look. So I just wanted to give you guys a little download on how I feel about this look. I think everything blended out. Like I said, that Snowmad shade does not go on quite as pigmented at first, but the one thing that I did like is it didn't skip at all. I've had some blues before that are really hard to work with. They get a little patchy and I didn't have that problem with this one. So let's go ahead and move into my second look. All right, now first impressions on the Lara Faye brushes so far. So I did use, gosh, did I use almost all of these? That would totally be me. Yeah, I did basically use almost all of these other than the, oh no, I did even use the lip brush. Yeah, I used the lip brush to put on the tacky base. So, so far I am really liking these brushes. I like that for me, they are, I mean, this one is like a pretty like swishy, smushy, swirly brush. <laughs> Yes, I am a professional makeup artist. Did you know? Can't you tell? The other thing is that these are incredibly soft. They feel great on the eyes. Like right now, my skin is hella dry. Like, sorry if you see any crispy, crunchy peeliness because it's happening. It's happening right now. And even on my eyelid, like up here, mm -hmm, hello winter. <laughs> so that means that my skin tends to get a little bit more sensitive and irritated. And these brushes did not hurt at all. I also have to say, I just used this baby for the first time, the F15. And if you saw my Instagram stories, I was talking about how I was excited because it's almost like a small BK Beauty 101. It's a little different, but it's a very similar shape. So I use this for for all of my foundation and for my liquid blush and loved it so far. So these brushes are really nice. I will definitely be using them again for the next look. Let's get into that. Hi, um, so I got up extra early this morning, evidently a little too early before I had enough coffee and I've been filming this look except I didn't have the camera rolling. So <laughs> I'm just very quickly going to go through and let you know what I did. This means you guys are gonna get three looks in this video. Ta-da! Surprise! Okay, so <laughs> I just went through with For Fox Sake first and just really like blew that out and then went in with these two shimmers. I know that everyone is loving So Amoosing, So Amoosed, and I had to use that one. So that's what's on the outer corner and my inner corner right now is Ski In. I did uh, clean all of this up because I had some of that For Fox Sake over here and I really just want to get it like really light and bright. So I just went through with some micellar water and I'm going to go back through and probably put a little concealer down and then like really make that shade pop just on my inner corner. But anyway, we also have the shade Gone Skiing. This is this really nice 
like mocha chocolate brown and then that one is what is like deepening up my crease uh that's that's what we have going so far so i am very quickly going to just do a little concealer and we will finish out this look i am so sorry uh <laughs> i'll give you my final thoughts on this one at the end but again this does mean that you're gonna get three looks in this video ta-da congratulations and uh i'm gonna be right back okay <laughs> So here's the deal. I um, I just decided to finish my makeup off of camera because uh, it sort of became a hot little mess. I was trying to use the E11. Uh, by the way, this is a great brush, but it's just not the best under eye brush when you're doing a very dark color. I went through with the uh, Bucking Great, this beautiful like foresty green. Oh, I love this shade, but um, I'm trying to just use the Lair Fay brushes today and yesterday and now tomorrow when I do my third look, but this is just, it's just too much. I did have to pull in another brush because this, <laughs> this shade got so low. So I just had to go through and wipe it away and add concealer again, blah, blah, blah. So I just finished it. I just went back through again with that color, like I said, in the inner corner, that skin shade. And once I, you know, got a little bit of brightness there with concealer, the shade went on beautifully. So just a little ramble about how I feel so far about these shades. So I will say that just like the blue shade, uh, the For Fox Sake, which I just love that name. I know. <laughs> Man, Nomad kills it with the names. Okay, so this shade here is a lot like the blue shade Snowmad in where when you initially put it on, you're not going to get the payoff that you see in the pan, but it does build up really nicely. Uh, I did do that before I went ahead and decided to like deepen it in with the brown, but it did deepen into a beautiful, like rich, warm, like it's kind of like a color of red that I would see in the desert kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? I think that having this warm shade in here just really brings some other opportunities into this palette if you do want to do a fun like contrasting look or if you're wanting to like stick with the golds and the browns you could do this i really actually like the addition of the green i was worried it was going to get a little too christmasy that's a big part of the reason why i didn't use this very cool shade in all honesty i know that this is a shade that i won't grab a lot it is that like very very yellow gold um which for me like that really, really goldy gold just isn't something that I reach for a lot, but I think it's it's perfect for this palette. You know, when you think of Whistler and the Olympic Village, and I think like Olympic gold medal with that shade, that's totally like, it's like that gold medal gold. But the ski and shade, I do really like, although I wish it had like a little more uh, to it. And that's the thing I found with some of the Nomad shimmers is some of them can be really like very impactful and some of them just not quite as much. And even though I did use this damp on the lid, I just didn't see like quite as much pow from it. It's beautiful. It's just not like a pow shade and that is okay. So altogether, I am very happy with this look. I'm actually going to be out teaching today. So I think that this is sort of like a good winter grungy vibes look. It's, it's, tipping towards Christmassy like if you love a good grungy look this would be great for Christmas but it's not it's not so Christmassy that it's like uh Kelly you're like a month and a half late here so I love this I am excited to do one more look with this uh I think I'll probably use almost every shade in the palette I have a feeling like just looking at what I'm probably going to do for this next one I might not get the gold in so again I am so sorry that I wasn't filming for this look but at least you can kind of like get the vibes a little bit uh, I just figured that since I put this on fresh, I would show you. The other reason I thought that I would still show you this look is today's going to be the perfect day to do a wear test. So, uh, it's about 6.45 in the morning right now. I am going to be out teaching a class, uh, which is why, by the way, I only have concealer on because I'm going to be throwing on a mask soon. But then I do have two Zoom classes later today that I'll be doing. So I'll be able to check in at the end of my day around seven o'clock at night. So we will <laughs> we'll have 12 hours of wear on this. So I'll do one or two brief check-ins just to show you the longevity of this shadow. I'm gonna insert those now and then we'll get into the final look, which I'm going to make sure to actually record. Hey lovelies, me and my shiny self are here to say hi to you. It is now uh, 3.14. So what time was it this morning? Seven o'clock? It was about seven, I think. Close to seven. So We've had this on for eight hours. Sorry, I had to do a little quick math in my head. I, secretly, I did use my fingers underneath the table. <laughs> so uh, this is the shadow after eight hours. Honestly, everything looks really, really good. This eye does have like the slightest crease to it. 
but that's it. Uh, I obviously use the Urban Decay Eden Primer, so that's going to extend the longevity a little bit. Uh, but yesterday, well, the day that I did the blue look, um, that lasted all day long. I did use a little bit of glitter glue on my lid shade, um, just right in the center when I did that halo eye, but other than that, I had used a concealer. So these shadows are lasting a really long time. And today, when I went to go get a coffee after I taught my first class, the girl at the drive up was like, oh my gosh, your eyeshadow is so great. I was like, thanks. <laughs> so, you know, you always love a good compliment. And it was, boy, I've been hustling around and having some stressful situations today, which probably made me sweaty. So this eyeshadow has been put through the ringer and it's still looking good. So I just wanted to give you guys the update. Uh, I think now after eight hours, that's a good, that's a good solid wear test. So why don't we move into our last look? I'm really excited. I'm kinda new with apologies. Holding back, I got history. with the third and final look. Uh, this might be my favorite of the three. I don't know, I love them all. I hope I hope that this is picking up. I did take a few pictures, so hopefully I'll be able to like snag the beauty of this one. I am going to work after this, so I really had no intentions of putting on any other makeup on my face, but I just love this so much that I felt like this look needed a little, uh, little moment in the sun. <laughs> So I wanted to be able to take some photos and I really love it. I like this combo of the teal and the like purpley pink shade. Let me turn down my light. I think you guys might be able to see just a little bit better. There we go. Maybe that just shows the majesty and the depth of these shades. This is like winter jewel toned yet still a bit of pastel going on. I don't know. I love it. I didn't quite know where I was going with this. I was hoping that I would get to using all 15 shades. I'm I did 13, so that's not too bad. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but I just wanted to give you guys a little up close on this look. I love it. Now, if you did watch the tutorial part of this look, you will know that I started out with Snow Bunny. That's that blue shade. I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the blues or the greens. And once I got the blue shade on, I kind of was like, ooh, maybe we'll mix it and make more of like a bluey greeny. So I still do have some of that blue like on the outer edges, but I did definitely layer over quite a bit of that Après Ski shade. Honestly, I just love that one. It's it's like this beautiful, it just makes me think of mint chocolate chip ice cream and maybe I'm hungry and I want some ice cream. <laughs> but uh, I did use that and then it also gave me an opportunity to use more of that bucking grape shade because in the last look, I just like put a little bit of that on my lower lash line. And in this look, of course, I used the Up to Snow Good shade. That is what is on my lid. This is a beautiful shade. I used Powder Specialist on the inner corner. I will say that this one, uh, it, it's a very soft, subtle duochrome. It it definitely has some shift, but it doesn't have a lot of shine and sparkle to it. So to me, this is like the diet version of uh, Nokomis from Davina. So that's from the Halo Moon collection. This is like its softer, slightly pinker sister. Uh, so if like you aren't into like the crazy pow, inner corners, but you want something that's a little bit special, this will be a nice shade. But if you're looking for that like extra bam, you're not gonna get that out of this. Uh, the black shade, the Ski Out, that one I was very impressed with. This is a very black shade, it's very matte. Uh, I used it as my lower lash line, and I did also end up needing to top it over my liner because my KVD liner that's in my project pan, I think she's like done. She's in my deck of panning, and uh, it was a struggle to like try to like get a good get a good line with that. So I did top over it with that shade, and it 
worked beautifully. So now we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go through my final thoughts on this palette and I'm also gonna break down this set for you from Lara Faye. So we'll go ahead and get into that right now. All right, let's go ahead and chat a little bit about the Whistler Snow Lodge palette. So I do have to say, uh, as I mentioned, I was able to use 13 out of 15 of the shades in here. I did not use the Berry Cool shade, that is the gold. Uh, I also did not use this one that I feel like everybody's been using. So if you've watched any other videos, you've probably seen someone use this one. This is Ski Bum. Originally I thought about using that in this look somewhere and it, it just it just didn't tickle my fancy today. Uh, I will be excited to use this one. I know a lot of people are liking this one. so. Um, I also know that since a lot of people have used that one, you've probably seen it already. So all in all, I love this palette. I mean, I will say that, again, like I'd mentioned with that powder specialist shade, if you're looking for like a really crazy duochrome, you're not going to get that out of this. I just don't think that that is, you know, the vibe of Nomad anyway. So if you've ever used Nomad Cosmetics, you probably knew that going into this. I certainly knew that and I've only had one of their palettes. Uh, other than that, every single shade performed really well. And that shade did perform really well. Like it was exactly what I kind of expected it to be, but everything has been so beautiful. I do think that there is something really unique to the texture of the Nomad shimmers. It's like they have like a shimmer, but also a micro fleck glitter to them. Uh, that does mean though that you get fallout, like hands down. <laughs> I pretty much get fallout every time I use these shimmers, uh, unless I wet my brush and I'm very, very careful. But even today I used glitter glue on my lid and I wet my brush and I still got some fallout that I had to clean up. So these will be palettes that I will use before I do any of my face makeup and that is totally fine. I love this palette. Uh, I have America's Parks. Ooh, okay, let's get her out and let's do a little, a little looky loo side by side. They are by no means like similar palettes. So this is the other one that I have. This is America's Parks right here. You can see that this one is much more cool toned. Uh, I do see that, you know, For Fox Sake and Giant Redwoods are about the only two that like right off the bat look similar. But if you can see, this is Giant Redwoods. This is much more of that like warmy orangey shade and then the two browns i can tell you right now that gone skiing um actually has compared to half dome uh gone skiing almost has like a like a cooler deeper to it so this is a uh, half dome and then this is gone skiing so other than that there's really nothing that like would necessarily compare so i am so glad to have this palette i do think Mm, no, I like them both the same. I guess I will say it's just really going to depend on what I want to do. I would say that this is a primarily cool toned palette. If you're looking for something that's like a little more cool toned, a little more jewel toned even, like you're going to get those deeper, richer shades out of the Whistler Snow Lodge palette. Uh, America's Parks, you're going to get like those more like warm and like, you know, nature inspired looks. So I love them both. So I really think that Nomad is priced very reasonably for the quality of their palettes. This palette is again $39 and you can always find discount codes out there. My friend Stephen Ford has one that is Stephen 10 so that can save you 10% off and that basically gets you free shipping. So I think that that is really great. I love this palette. Hands down I recommend it. If you love these shades I think you will be very happy with it. The mattes worked beautifully. Again I did not have any skipping at all and I used three different primers. Uh, today by the way I did use the uh, Jason Wu Wu Prime Eye. In my previous look, I used the eyeshadow primer from Urban Decay, and then in the look before that, I just used concealer. So they worked well with all three. Again, I think if you're wanting to keep the sparkle mostly on your lid, use a glitter glue for those shimmer shades. I think it just helps with the intensity of them and also avoids a little bit of the fallout. So definitely an A++ for me, and I'm glad that it is uh, one of my purchases for the year. And I'm glad that very soon, one of you is gonna be getting a chance to win it. I did just hit 2K. I think maybe at the beginning of this taping session, I said that I was getting very close to 2K. Uh, it happened. I hit 2K in the last couple days, so I'm so excited. So those giveaways will be coming soon. I have two giveaways coming, my 2K here on YouTube and my 1K on Instagram. So 
make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on details for those. Now let's talk about these Lara Fay brushes. So um, again, I have seven of the nine here. Uh, there were two brushes that I decided to incorporate into one of those giveaways, just because in all honesty, they're shapes that I either already have a lot of or don't use a lot. So one of them was a angled liner brush, which I already have like a bajillion of. I have a feeling the quality of that one is gonna be great. And then it was a more angled shadow brush. So those will be included in the giveaway. So if you wanna get some of these, which you should wanna get some of these because spoiler alert, they are amazing. Uh, so if you wanna get some of those, make sure that you are subscribed. So uh, let's just do like a little bit of a breakdown of what I found about these brushes. So. Uh, I did go ahead and I used the lip brush, the L01. That is what I used to apply the glitter glue. So uh, I haven't used this as a lip brush. I couldn't tell you how that is. It did work really well for detail work on my lid to be able to get some of that glitter glue into my inner corner. This worked really nicely. I do think it would make a really great lip brush. I also think that this is gonna work really nicely for inner corner highlights. So I'm glad to have this one on hand. Uh, moving to the opposite side here, the E14, this brush is so fluffy, so nice and big and like, like I said before, it has a little bit more movability. So this is great if you're doing like a one and done wash of color. I use this even like with nothing on the brush to really blend out this edge here. This is a beautiful brush. I think that it is big enough but not so big that you're gonna like create a mess. You can still get like a little bit more precision than you can uh, like with a shape like this with the BK Beauty. This is the 201. You can just see that it's like a little bit smaller. It also has a little bit more taper to it. So then this brush is one that I used a lot in the last few days. This is the E18 and this is what I used to pack on my shimmer shades. It worked really nicely. Uh, I didn't really have any problems with this. So this is gonna be a new one that I will be using a lot in my collection. Then here we have the E15. So this brush, in all honesty, is one that I will probably use for either like whacking on a cream shadow really quickly. Uh, it's pretty big, so it would need to be something that's not too crazy pigmented, but I could do eye primer with this. I could conceal. I think I did use this to actually like do lower, uh, lower eye? What is that called? Under eye. <laughs> I did use it for my under eye concealer. Wow. And then these three though are the standouts for me in this collection. We have the E11, the E12, and the E13. These are like my dream brushes to have in my collection. You have a beautiful uh, pointed, not too pointed, but pointed little like detail brush here. It still has enough flexibility to it though. This is um, maybe similar to, so you can see here, I actually just pulled out the B1 and the B4 brush from Blend Bunny. So similar shapes, I'm gonna say, and I probably have maybe one of the other Blend Bunnies that's like, somewhere in the middle of these, might even be closer, but she's probably dirty right now. So this is still a little bit more tapered. So I feel like this is just a little bit more tapered yet. And uh, the density is about the same on them though. So this will be nice for those times that you are wanting, you know, like a really dense precision brush, but this still does still have like a little bit of wiggleability to it. Not a word, but we're using that one. Okay, so then we have the E12. This has a little bit more of a flat top than the E13, but you really get some very nice precision with this. This is pretty much every time what I use to like get into my outer corner with my deepest shade. I really did like this one. And then the E13 is a good all around crease brush. I think if you have a uh, smaller eye shape, if you wanna work a little bit more delicately, this works well, but you can also use this to get a really nice like big fluffy blend too. So definitely enjoying these. They are very, very soft. Like, uh, yeah, I mean, I would have to say, I feel like these, these are very, very soft. They feel really nice. So I was actually just talking to Alana and I told you that that's how I found out about these brushes. I was like, wow, I'm really liking these after like using them for a week. It's like, they feel really nice. And mm, I have not washed these yet. So just stick with me here. But I feel like the quality of the Lara Fay is like maybe a notch up from the Spectrum brushes. And I, I love my KJH set, I really do. There are some shapes in it that I truly adore, but I, in the future, because I think that they are probably similarly priced, uh, I think I would go towards Lara Fay than going towards Spectrum. So I'm really excited to get some face brushes in the future. I'm not buying any more brushes though until I go through and do a brush declutter because it is 
well needed. I also need to do a brush washing session. So I just wanted to give you guys the details on these. Hands down, I would recommend them um, because I know that Alana has used and washed hers many a time. Uh, I think that, you know, I can stand by her opinion on that, but so far from me using these, these are amazing. So now I'm going to insert a picture of swatches of the Nomad Whistler palette. I just wanted to give you guys an image if you would like to screenshot it, but again, I feel like Everybody has seen all the swatches of this on Instagram and the videos that you've probably already watched on this one. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to spend it with me here. I hope that this video has been helpful. I will make sure to have both the Nomad Whistler Snow Lodge palette and the Larifé brush set linked down below. If you would like to check them out, thank you so much, lovelies. I'll see you really soon.